Are US price pressures creeping back up? Welcome to Market Insight, I'm David Pollard. After some hints of hawkishness in yesterday's FOMC minutes release, data today raises concerns that a downward path to US rates may still be some way away. Jobless claims came in lower than forecast last week, pointing to persistent tightness in the labor market. And the latest PMI readings show US output, especially services, picking up speed at a rapidly increasing pace. A sub-index for input prices was at its highest level in a year and a half. Well, for his take on all this, Gregory Dacko, chief economist at EY Parthenon, is with us. Welcome, Gregory. Many thanks for joining us. That last detail in the PMI readings has to be the most acutely worrying for the Fed, doesn't it? That disinflation in goods could be close to running its course at a time of higher staffing costs. Yeah, I think it's important to pay attention to the direction of travel of goods price inflation. We have seen likely the end of the massive disinflation cycle over the course of the past 18 months. But I would note one detail that I think is very important in the latest PMI indices in that input prices are certainly rising at a faster clip, but output prices, prices that are passed on to consumers, are not rising faster. That is a sign that there is perhaps less pricing power and more pricing sensitivity on the final end of consumers. So that may push businesses to rethink how they price their goods and essentially think about ways to offset internal costs because they won't necessarily have as much pricing pressure as in the past. Well, what about jobless claims then, which point to no let up in a tight labor market? What are you seeing there? What sectors are experiencing the most demand and to what extent is supply an issue? So it's interesting to note that we continue to see very low levels of unemployment uh, claims. Uh, we continue to see very low layoff levels of layoffs as well. But we are starting to see businesses be a little bit more cautious with their hiring decisions. You have a hiring rate that is at its lowest since 2018, which is an indication that the labor market is indeed somewhat uh, softening. But you are right. We are still seeing some tightness, especially in some sectors where structural supply of labor may be deficient. The healthcare sector, education, the state and local government sector as well, and perhaps some of that need for greater supply on the leisure and hospitality front. But overall, what we are still seeing is a cooling of the labor market, slower job growth in the coming months, a slight upward pressure on the unemployment rate, um, and less diffusion of job growth across sectors. Well, let's also take a quick look at the housing market, where data today shows new home sales falling by more than expected, yet prices are still going up and mortgage rates are still very high. It all spells misery for home builders and home buyers, doesn't it? Well, from a housing perspective, what we are seeing is that depressed affordability is really constraining housing demand. Uh, that is one fact that we have to contend with, which will likely weigh on residential investment in the upcoming GDP print for the second quarter. But I think what's also important to note is that there is a structural deficiency on the supply side. That should continue to support stronger supply, stronger home building activity, to essentially serve that marginal demand that keeps coming back online every time you see some pullback in mortgage rates. That's really the key to unfreezing the housing market today is greater supply that addresses the needs and matches home buyers in terms of price levels. We're not there yet, and this is likely to take a few years to pan out, but that would be essentially the solution to the frozen market that we're currently seeing today. Now, next week, we get the PC price index, a rise of 0.3% is penciled there. And of course, that is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. What is the broader inflation picture in your view? And should we be revising that forecast upwards? I think generally speaking, we're approaching an inflation plateau when it comes to both the CPI gauge and the PCE gauge, which is the Fed's preferred gauge of inflation. We're approaching a plateau that is not too far, in our opinion, from 2.5% which is the point at which the Fed would set, it would start to ease monetary policy. Yes, the base effects comparisons versus last year will not be that favorable over the course of the summer, but this inflation momentum, if you look at fundamentals, is still firmly in place. You have cooling final demand growth, you have cooling rent price inflation, you have an environment in which wage growth is moderating, 
and you have stronger productivity growth. Those are all the ideal elements to lead to further disinflation. It will be a little bit slower over the course of the summer, but as we end into the back end of uh, 2024 and into 2025, we should see that momentum continue. So where now for Fed policymakers who've been very quick to play down any rapid move downwards in interest rates? Are you in the same camp as Goldman Sachs boss David Solomon, who says there'll be no rate cuts this year at all? Or given what you've just said, you are you still confident there might be cuts? I think there will likely still be cuts over the course of the, the coming months. Uh, we are in an environment where policymakers want to err on the side of caution. They're worried about inflation potentially reaccelerating or at least not falling further. Um, the minutes from the FOMC meeting indicate that amongst policymakers, there is essentially this view that there might be a risk that inflation could stay higher for longer, which would warrant policy to remain tighter for longer. We still believe that given what I just described in terms of our outlook for disinflation over the course of the coming months and an easing of labor market momentum, we should see a couple of rate cuts in the back end of this year, perhaps even with an onset in July if the data corroborates. But if it doesn't, then there'll likely be a pushback in terms of the easing uh, cycle starting perhaps in September, although elections may play a little bit of an optical uh, illusion game there uh, with, with the optics of easing ahead of the elections that may be perceived uh, or conceived as being politically mo motivated. OK, Gregory Dacko, Chief Economist at EY Partenon, many thanks for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank that you. is Market Insight. You can watch more videos on Reuters.com.